Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Fagan. I'm an enterprise architect at Comcast within the DX organization. Uh, this is Prashant Kanolkar. I'm an enterprise architect at Comcast within the DX organization as well. My focus is to build a self-service platform to make big data securely and universally available to everyone within the enterprise at Comcast scale. And we're talking about securely enhancing hybrid cloud with Alexio. So the agenda for today's talk, um, I'll give a brief introduction of what we do within Comcast and talk about some of the benefits that we get from hybrid cloud and talk about some of the data access and orchestration challenges that it brings. Then I'll turn the presentation over to Prashant and he will talk about our solution and how we address some of the challenges. So as I previously mentioned, we're part of the DX organization, which stands for the data experience. We manage and maintain enterprise data sets for the company. And the way we do that is through a self-service platform and automation so that we can deliver you know, curated and technical metadata through search and discovery services. We provide um, automated data governance tools and services. We provide uh, tag and lineage-based security controls so that we can do for coarse and fine-grained security on top of data sets. Additionally, we manage the BI analytics and reporting tools within the organization. And finally, we operate some of the critical data pipelines. When talking about hybrid cloud and our journey for hybrid cloud, we, when we started, there wasn't a lot of support or advocates for this type of architecture. But for us, it made a lot of sense. And the six reasons why we kind of, you know, employing this architecture is number one, we had a large investment of on-prem resources, large Hadoop environment with thousands of nodes, large MPP data warehouse, and it was hard to just walk away from that. We still wanna leverage that environment even though we're starting to use the public cloud. Secondly, the, using the public cloud changes our mindset on how we build apps and services. The cost is associated with every resource you use in the public cloud. And that mindset change for our implementation teams has changed so they're now more um, efficient in writing code and more efficient in using their resources. And we're able to build models on top of, of data sets and pipelines so that we can start figuring out where is the best place to, to host data or to host workflows so that we can optimize our spend. The one thing that we also really like about the public cloud is the on-demand provisioning. Our procurement cycles run on an annual basis and we plan and we strategize, but there's always a new use case that comes to us with a critical need that has to be solved ASAP. On-demand provisioning allows us to, you know, open up the, the environment more so that we can handle more of those use cases. The other benefit we really like about public cloud is on-demand scaling. This is absolutely critical for our um, unpredictable workloads at scale. Engineering this solution on-prem would be very cost effect, would be very co cost expensive and would drive um, utilization numbers of our overall hardware down. The last thing we like about public cloud is its reliability. We often have data sets that weave their way into operational or public facing use cases. It's nice to then take that data set, put it in a high availability public cloud so that you can meet those use cases without having to worry about availability or impacting you know, customer service or impressions. The last part is not all workloads really fit in public cloud. It doesn't make sense to move everything there are some work, some legacy applications and services that would require a lot of re-engineering in order to move them to the cloud. There's also applications and services that are kind of in bed in the environment and be hard to extract. There's also 
you know, use cases around security or regulations that really limit what you can do with that data set or processing. One of the one of the strategies people sometimes employ is lift and shift um, as a public cloud strategy that is not a winning solution. With the benefits that we get with hybrid cloud, there's also some challenges. The first being network latency. As you're moving data sets or processing to other data centers, you have to deal with the physics of that distance between you. And that mostly impacts your time critical workloads that you have to solve. The next challenge is around the security models. On-prem security model is generally different than a public cloud security model. They come with their own roles and policies that is slightly different. So you really need to either normalize or isolate those model differences so you don't have to spend a lot of money re-engineering. The next point is around managing dependent workloads. Not every workload runs in isolation. A lot of these workloads are pulling in external data sets, either for validation or enrichment. And being able to isolate those external dependencies is important so that you can have a flexibility of moving workloads and data across your entire ecosystem. The next point is the cloud export tax. Everyone understands that pulling data out of a public cloud costs money. The more often you do it, the bigger the, money, the tax you have to pay. So monitoring your usage and access pattern is critical so that you can have an intelligent caching strategy to control cost. The next point is about storage protocol mismatch. In the public cloud, native storage is object store. On-prem, a lot of your storage is based on POSIX. And you really need to be able to isolate that mismatch so that you're not re-engineering applications or data sets to deal with the current environment. The last point of hiding the storage environment is kind of the converse of dependent workloads. Clients are dependent upon where data sets live and when they're available. Having a single point, logical point that you can point to for workloads and having, a, having that hide the physical location is critical to allow you to have the flexibility to move things around. And finally, you really want to minimize data movement. Having duplicate persistent data sets is an anti-pattern and trying to scale your network performance for large remote reads is very difficult. So now that I've gone over some of the benefits and challenges that, that we had to uh, deal with, I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Prashant and he's gonna talk about our solution and how we address these challenges. Take it away, Prashant. Yeah, thank you, Michael, for the introduction. So moving along, uh, let me tell you a little bit about our Comcast data processing ecosystem and how we addressed some of our challenges, uh, especially performance and egress cost from AWS using Alexio as a caching solution. The Comcast hybrid data lake is built on top of a variety of platforms, which include AWS, HDFS, and Mint.io, which is an S3 compatible object store on premise. Data egress from this hybrid data lake is provided by a query fabric that leverages Presto as a SQL query engine for big data. We use Privacera for data access and governance. Privacera uh, leverages the Apache Ranger architecture to provide tag-based policies and access controls. Alexio provides us with a unified data plane for Presto-based access to specific S3 data sets that require caching when egressing data from AWS to on-premise. So a little bit about our original approach. Uh, we are a long-term user and a contributor to the Presto open source community and have quite a sizable Presto footprint on-premise and in the cloud. Uh, we have even built connectors to stitch multiple Presto environments together 
to provide a common logical endpoint that we can use uh, to query from a variety of data sources, something we refer to as the Comcast query fabric. While uh, Presto is great for, for uh, interactive SQL queries on very large data sets, remote data can uh, significantly affect performance. Further, Presto queries run completely in memory and lack any kind of a caching mechanism. Subsequent uh, Presto queries run independent of each other and do not benefit from any form of caching or data sharing. Without a, a caching solution at the intersection of on-premise and cloud, we have to either copy the data locally to HDFS or we must incur the data egress charges from AWS. These costs uh, can and do add up over time and can become quite significant. So uh, next, let us look at what happened after we introduced Alexio into our ecosystem. Since uh, Presto lacks a cache, we chose to leverage Alexio primarily as a caching layer for Presto. Specific S3 buckets, depending on whether they required a caching solution, are mounted to Alexio. External hype tables are then created on top of the Alexio path, which point to the remote S3 bucket under the covers. Alexio and Presto is a powerful combination uh, that can dramatically improve query performance for remote data, and we saw an immediate benefit in query execution times. Alexio can intelligently manage its multi-tiered cache by keeping the most requested data in memory, or we can manually preload the cache uh, in advance of running our workloads. Caching remote data using Alexio provided us with better performance predictability than our Presto only solution. We also have a number of Spark jobs that run uh, from our on-premise Spark cluster that need to access data from AWS and join it against other local data sources. Since Alexio can be used both as a source and a sync, we need to load data only once into Alexio. Intermediate data sets can also be saved in the Alexio file system if necessary. Alexio uh, provides a fast storage access and sharing of data across multiple Spark jobs, which is something which wasn't possible before. It also ensures that the real data path in persistent under storage is hidden from Spark. And uh, this provides us with a unified data access plane. Uh, next, uh, let us look at how Alexio affected our Spark ETL job performance. Prior to Alexio, uh, we had to copy data from S3 to HDFS for Spark jobs that ran on-premise. We realized an immediate improvement in Spark ETL job performance after introducing Alexio into our ecosystem. And our operations have become a lot simpler uh, because we no longer have to manage data copies. As you can see from the performance chart on this slide, our S3 access has become an orders of magnitude faster, about 10x uh, in certain cases with Alexio compared to the old methods uh, that were in place. Finally, uh, let us assess how we did on addressing the challenges with hybrid cloud that my colleague Michael had outlined before. So first, network latency. Network latency for data access uh, is no longer an issue with Alexio. And depending upon the size of the data set, we pay the penalty only once while loading the data in the cache. The subsequent reads run at memory speeds. Since Alexio supports a variety of storage systems that we have in place at Comcast, we did not have to deviate from our existing security models uh, that we had in place, such as Privacera and Custom Broker. Managing data-dependent workloads became easy after Alexio because it provides the abstraction layer that was much needed. And we were able to use our existing Apache Atlas solution for metadata and lineage. 
uh, Alexio also allowed us to control our data egress cost, what we call the cloud export tax. Since Alexio unifies access to storage systems with its unified namespace feature, there is no longer a, a storage protocol mismatch. Alexio with its robust uh, data orchestration features and Presto with its extensive list of connectors allows us to run SQL anywhere and not worry about the underlying storage environment where the data lives. Finally, Alexio with its caching features also minimizes data movement and provides a significant benefit as a result. Lastly, thank you all uh, for taking the time today to listen to our presentation uh, about our Alexio journey. Uh, I would also like to thank the Alexio team, especially Asim Rastogi, Nakul Srinivas, and Kevin Hardeman for their valuable guidance and technical expertise. It's been a great partnership and we are just getting started. If you have uh, any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to either myself or Michael via uh, email. Thanks again.